your mum does it now. No, no, have it, have it, it's good, it's good. <laughs> Drop the fox, bro. I'm playing, bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I you thought got, I was a gunner. You gotta leave this in, you gotta leave this in. I thought I was a gunner. Is this on, yeah? <laughs> it is recording, unfortunately, yeah. Alright, we're slumped in the chair now. Alright, mate. Alright. Alright. First time I've had two, uh, two guests on at once. It's a bit of a different dynamic, but unfortunately having to share the mic. Not got that big a budget. Uh, this is the first edition of the smaller mini pods that are going to be going out midweek. Uh, just a bit more bite size. You're still going to get your hour long, hour plus, you know, two hours, however long episode every Sunday. But I thought it was a good opportunity whilst I'm doing things out in public. Obviously, got the Lake District. We're currently, where are we, Archie? We are at the Lady Bower Reservoir. Yeah, so we're currently out in Sheffield. It, it's not in Sheffield anymore, actually, is it? We're on the edge of Sheffield, you know. On the A57 between Sheffield and Manchester, but definitely closer to Sheffield. Yeah, and then we'll be in the Lake Districts in a, uh, in a few weeks. So there'll be plenty of these coming out. Um, it's just a good chance to get through the questions that I couldn't answer in the Q&A. So if anyone's got any more questions that you want to answer, you don't know who especially is going to be answering it, but something that's been on your mind, send them to the email address in the description and we'll get through them during these. So today's question comes from Glenn Jackson 5000 who asks what's the best piece of advice you ever heard before we answer it introduce yourselves because I forgot to do that hello I'm Tobias oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tobias um, I got an email um, I'm you gonna to introduce yeah, himself <laughs> what you think about it all right mates I am Archie I've been on the podcast with Mr. Horrocks, it was an absolute pleasure. Episode six, go and watch it. And I am a storyteller. I love telling stories. I love living an interesting life that gives me stories to tell. And I also work for a tech company as a marketing manager. And yeah, I love badminton, playing guitar, solving the Rubik's Cube, dipping in and out of a bit of everything, really. I'm Tobias, I'm an enthusiast um, of, many, of many different things. One thing that I'm very enthusiastic about at the minute is science um, and engineering and spreading it to more people, um, but also the, the arts and how they all mesh together. Very interesting. The, the majority of the guests that you'll see on these shorter episodes will be having a full episode in the future where we can go into a bit more detail into these things. But for today, what's the best piece of advice you ever heard? The first thing that came to mind when I thought that was don't listen to any advice and the way that I interpreted that was you, you got to go out and you, you got to just go and live your life you've got to be in the world um, and like be be worldly wise and be like be fully in the world not just a product of the world um, experience things yourself sort of thing yeah so they're hearing it from yourself. somebody else yeah. go out yeah go outside and learn it learn it yourself because you can often find yourself getting caught in like thought patterns of um just consuming 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 advice thinking you're gonna get to some some realization some some clarity you're gonna make yourself productive better from just listening to other people when you just gotta take some action do what scares you do what hurts and make it you make, make it yourself and make it original right because if you're not listening to other people's advice you listen to your own advice and that's y y your own advice that's backed up by substantial substantive e experience yeah yeah i love that and you know, i'm all for action taking so i think that's definitely a very good advice for me when I think of advice, I, I think of asking someone who's been through a lot because I think it's very easy to ask a 20-year-old or a 25-year-old or even a 30-year-old about for advice. But I think about my granddad. He's someone who I really look up to in my life. He's literally on my, on my phone wallpaper. And uh, I think the reason for that is because he grew up in India just after the partition of India and Pakistan. So his dad basically had to flee Pakistan start his life again literally like they, they they were telling me the story they fled from pakistan with nothing but like cutlery and like a, a few bags of like you know like like gold or whatever kind of like minerals that they had at the time like like valuable stuff and that was it just can you imagine that can you imagine leaving your life right now to an entirely different country 
at a time when there's like, obviously a lot, a lot less technology, a lot less security, massive unrest in the world, and just you know flying to another country. And uh, my granddad pretty much grew, grew up after being like that. So I think simply from 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 his from his kind of childhood alone, he's someone I look to for advice. And then beyond that, he's been through so much more. You know, he started businesses of his own. He's you know, obviously, because he's older, you go through things like you go through, you know, your relationships and lives and deaths and having kids and having grandkids. Anyway, I'll get to the point here. The bit of advice that he gave me is that regardless of how busy life gets, regardless of how stressed you get, regardless of how many things are going on at once, you can only focus on one thing at a time. And I know you've heard this advice so many times, like don't multitask, don't you know, put your finger in, in too many pies or don't don't dip your feet in too many rivers. Like there's so many w different ways of saying it, but I think very, very, very few of us actually live that advice out. We're always trying to trying to chase two rabbits. You know, the hunter who chases two rabbits doesn't even catch one. And th again, there's a lot of expressions in our in our language, like kill two birds with one stone. They're kind of meaningless, right? Like, you know, wh why are you trying to kill two birds with one stone? Take, take 10 stones and kill one bird first, you know? Uh, and again, the example that he gave to me about focus is you know the rays of sunlight if you can get gather all the rays of sunlight and get a magnifying glass you can actually burn like a little black object I'm sure you've done that experiment in like science at school at some point maybe even at home and to do that you've got to focus all the rays onto one point you can't be like I'm gonna slightly heat up this entire black surface but no, I'm gonna burn this bit first then I'm gonna move on to the next bit so that's the best advice that I've get, ever gotten uh, and I'm, I try to implement that and I, I, I struggle from time to time, but that's what keeps me keeps me focused. And Is there any example that springs to mind of a time when you have implemented that in your life? I think social media. Obviously, now I'm a creator, so it's you know a challenge to manage. But for a large part of my childhood, I just kind of like when everyone else was getting on on the social medias, I was very very like, no, I must focus on the things I actually care about: school, real life relationships, health and fitness. You know that's it like like I, I can't add in more things obviously I've just mentioned three things there but you, you get the idea you know I don't want this sprinkle of like dopamine throughout my days I guess that's that's probably the the most practical example also like sports like I play badminton and I've had opportunities to play loads of other sports but I've always just kept that as like a focus point of like I'm, I'm good at this sport I love this sport there's always more to do. Like if, if I'm not enjoying playing for whatever, whatever reason, I'll coach for a bit or I'll watch more badminton. I'll coach my sister. Like there's there's one focal point that everything revolves around, you know, that's what I try and do. Yeah, very interesting. I was just having to think because I should probably answer the question as well since I asked to get, get them sent in. Um, I did a video on this piece of advice. I'm not sure it's the best or whatever, but it's one that really stands out to me. It was given to me by my dad. So again, I think it's nice when it comes from within the family. Um, and it was regard in regards to the relationship that I'm currently in. He told me it years ago when I was probably two years into the relationship and I will have only been about 16 years old. And he told me it's probably not going to last. Now, obviously, looking back as we are now, he's wrong so far. However, that piece of advice is extremely valuable and something that I think a lot of young men overlook. The idea of your first love, your first girlfriend, or even maybe just if it's your third relationship, but it's the one that you're in now and you think, this is it, this is me, done, settled, we're getting married. There's a lot of complacency that can come along with that attitude and it's something that I've suffered from in the current relationship I'm in now. It didn't come to an end because of it, but it very nearly could have, as we spoke about in the, uh, in the Q&A that we did together. But also, I see it happen with my friends, um, f you know, through high school. You know, we, I, th we, I think we're the only relationship that's still together, especially out of my friends group that, that um, left high school where these guys, you become complacent. I, I don't like talking about other people, so I'll use me as the example. But complacency for me was thinking, she loves me. She's going to love me no matter what, no matter who I am, no matter what I do. She'll stay with me forever. A bit, you know, blue-pilled fairy tale kind of... Kind of um, approach of looking at it and because of that you become complacent you stop going to the gym you stop working on yourself uh, on yourself you stop eating correct food all of a sudden for me my mental health got worse which obviously was not ideal for the relationship but even just becoming out of shape stopping pursuing all the sports that I'd play for a start things that made her attracted to me fell away because of complacency, because of the idea that I've got her now and I'm never going to lose her. 
So to have the approach that the relationship that you're in is not going to last forever and next month you could be needing to, you know, you might be back on the market, you need to keep that level of attractiveness. It's only going to prolong the actual relationship, I believe. Well, it's worked for me anyway. It's not a case of, oh, why are you planning for another girl or whatever? It's more you're just maintaining a level of attractiveness that you can lose through complacency. But I think, the yeah, the advice that it's probably not going to last forever was very valuable, even though it was wrong so far. But, yeah, I don't know how long we've done, but it felt like a uh, a nice short pod. But like I said, there'll be plenty of these coming out midweek, maybe one, two a week. So uh, if you enjoyed it, click like, click subscribe. If you're watching on, on Spotify, click follow and rate it five stars. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Be lucky. Be lucky.